Hello, hello, and have a good day. Hey, see down here. This is my new Qcom Pro made by Icom. And this is an absolutely incredible, good MIDI controller. But don't get me wrong, all what I show you in the next few minutes cannot be done only with that controller. It can be done with every controller who supports MCU. It's a MIDI protocol and which is connected to Mixing Station Pro. Uh, think of a X-Touch from Behringer that will work. It's only a matter of how many controls you have here, how many controls you have on the channel strip and what else you have on your controller. Basically, you can make whatever you like or whatever you need to have. I will show you what I have done for my setup, for my needs, uh, so I can work fast and efficient. Uh, here you can see my setup with uh, mixing station here in, in the left and down you can see the media controller sometimes you will see my hands coming in uh, don't worry about that okay first of all uh, i have implemented uh, a few modes um, i'm thinking uh, on a mode um, i'm thinking some changing my QCOM to do anything else than the normal way. For that, I have that top uh, top right knob here. Well, you might cannot see it on the camera. Let's move it a bit over here. Okay, here, here it is. This one always brings me in my basic mode. Basic mode is how I mix a show. Uh, the basic mode is the fader or controlling FOH. The select buttons are selecting any channels. The mute buttons are muting the channels. This row here is my S. It's called solo. And the top row, which is normally not used, is set for sent on faders for the first four monitor ways and the four FX sends. The knobs on top, uh, you might not can see it, but it's written on the display. They are controlling pan in normal mode, or what I can do, I can push on it. And if you can see it, it switches on the channel gain and switch back and forward, whatever I need at the moment. Normally selecting, selected is pan. This is the basic, how I mix a show. There is nothing else to do normally. I can go into send some fader. As you can see, mixing station follows, and this is the control for the first monitor. You can go send some faders on the second monitor. You see the faders have changed. Let's do anything else, switch them back and forward. You can see that works quite a way. The faders are always going with. Okay, as you can see, I have eight channels here. And you look, if you look on the on mixing station, they are up to 24, 32 channels, whatever I need. At the moment, I think there are 18 channels for that setup. Uh, with these two buttons here, I can move eight channels to the left, eight channels to the right. 
and you might see the mixing station, the first of the A channel always gets selected. This is this one here. And I can switch back and forward, can go eight more. Just switching the layers. Something special too, if I just touch one, that channel gets selected. Here is always my <coughs> bus master. In FOH mode is uh, controlling the volume at front of house. If I'm in sense on fader mode, that one is controlling the main send. Okay, uh, let's see what I have here. Some, these are just some shortcuts. Uh, if I can come close or uh, I might put a picture on it. Uh, this opens scribble script, opens my scenes, opens my FX rack, opens my player, that one I already told. Give me, uh, brings me always back to my home screen. Then these eight bat buttons, they have two functions controlled by this one. Uh, the first gets sense on fader on the other eight buses. And the second one controls my light. My light is uh, that's a bit special. Uh, there is a second media implement implementation in uh, which goes to Freestyle, a free lighting software. Uh, in Freestyle, I have eight presets defined, and I just can start that eight presets. That's about it. Okay. Then on the next next row, these are. As you can see in mixing station, these are the six mute groups. That row controls my different modes. I have pan mode, it's my default mode. I have EQ mode, gate mode, compressing mode, GOF called gain on fader. So we'll come to that one a bit later. And this one goes to light, lighting mode. Eight more buttons opens my eight FX slots. And there is a lock button who locks my faders. This is a QCon standard button here. Uh, it can open a screensaver uh, to not uh, that I don't change anything, what I shouldn't. And here, the last six layers, they are controlling my, uh, last six buttons, they are controlling my layers. There's one, oh, let's go to default mode. There's just moving left, right. And here's my, always the first, it's the user one, user two, user three, user four. I have these four layers I have defined on every board I'm using it with. And the default layers like in channel 1 to 16, in channel 17 to 32, uh, all my 16 mix buses, all my FX returns and AUX channels, my matrices and main, and my DCAs. Shortcuts always th uh, to these standard layers. And that one down here, as I already told, moving between the channels on one layer. In the middle, the zoom button, you might see it blinking. Uh, this controls the tap delay, uh, the time of my delay with tapping go slow 
or can go fast, whatever I need. Uh, the button down here activates my mute group one on which always my FX returns are. And <clears throat> that one uh, solos my active bus, so active master can be an uh, FOH or uh, a monitor send. So I have it on my headphones because there is no uh, no button up here and sometimes I'm happy to hear it. Okay, what else can I say? The jog wheel uh, controls in the normal situation controls. Uh, you see it on the mixing station. Uh, it controls my headphone volume. And now let's go into the special things. This is that row here, like my different modes. The pan mode, uh, the modes normally are controlling the encoders up here and the first row of buttons is the normal. Some small differences are in some modes in. I'll let you know about this. Pan mode, as I said, the first row is send some faders on the eight most used buses. Encoders controlling pan. Encoders can be pushed uh, to control the gain. Can push the gain, switch, uh, switch, switches back to pan. The EQ mode. Uh, with the e, in the EQ mode, I can control all four to six. Uh, EQ bands who are available on a channel. EQ mode works on the selected channel, not on the eight channels. That means which channel is selected is uh, pretty important. Uh, on the first button, who is ready yet, I can switch on off the EQ. On the last button in the EQ mode, I can switch on off the low cut. Low cut frequency is right above. You see it move it moving. And the frequencies, the first bond is here, second bond, third bond, and fourth bond. And to change anything on the first Encoder is uh, the EQ type. Oh, let's switch to the first band. It's easier to see. Uh, see, change from a low shelf, PQ, VQ. It's on the first. It's always labeled in the display. The frequency can be changed. Gain from the DQ band can be changed, of course, and uh, the Q. It's really handy have, having these on, on the knobs up here. It's really, really handy. Uh, the knob can be pushed too. The first knob is the first band, second, third, and fourth. The last two knobs, uh, I can just go through. Might not need it any time. But here I can switch to the band and then you see always the right EQ band gets been changed. Okay, let's switch into gate mode. In gate mode as usual on the first button switching it on and off and all other functions are labeled in the display. There are no functions on the uh, knobs push but uh, the turning is that their sold range uh, to our empty, not assigned attack, hold, and release. Just about the same in the compressor mode. The first one switches on off. On the knobs is uh, their sold ratio gain, the mix, attack, hold, release, and knee. And uh, you can see that works pretty well. 
changing the hold, changing ratio, changing the makeup gain, uh, changing the mix. If you do parallel processing, uh, attack, hold. Uh, this is handy, having hit here and not uh, having to move it on the, uh, with a mouse. Release and knee. This is the compressor. Always go back to the default mode with the pan knob or with the home knob. Now, the next button switches to GOF. This is really special. GOF if, uh, is, uh, the meaning is gains on fader. And as long as I press that button, my eight faders are representing the gain of each channel. And let me switch to uh, Oops, that was the wrong one. Let, uh, let me switch into record mode. So I have uh, preamps assigned to the channels. Uh, on top here is phantom power of each channel. You see here, changing the phantom power and here moving around the gain. So let's switch back into play mode that we have something on the meters. So, okay, this is GOF and uh, that button switches into lightning mode. It's just, uh, yes, if I press it, I uh, can see on the display my aid lights can switch them on off whatever and on the chalk wheel is the uh, brightness of the light same is with the player uh, if I activate the player the volume of the player is on the chalk wheel these are just some special things even if I'm on the player, that buttons here will uh, control, like play. Uh, but for that, I would have to open the song. Now we can go to play. There's the USB player with the USB stick plugged in to the M32. Switching back to stop, and that's about it. This is just something. I don't know if I need it any time. Uh, if I am on solo on, on uh, one or more channels, the scrap button will clear solo. Yes, that's about it. You see, just, uh, just a bit is implemented. It works extremely well. Uh, and as I said in the beginning, it doesn't need to be a Qcom Pro X. It can be any other MIDI controller who supports the MCU protocol. It's really easy to implement in mixing station as soon as you uh, know how it works. If you know how uh, to design an uh, individual layout, you know most things you need to know. Okay, I hope you liked the video. Making a job for now, for today, and wish you a good day. Bye.